This is my bedroom and what I wanted to show you today was how to make this gray accent pillow. I had seen something similar to this in a magazine and I just kind of fell in love with it. And so I figured out a technique using your ruffler foot where you can make this continuous ruffle and do it over uh, the whole length of your material. So if you'd like to follow along, it's really simple to make and I'll show you the technique that I have created on making this pillow. Okay, now here's the pillow I'll be using. It's just a regular standard pillow. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to measure it and I'm going to bring it down to this seam uh, about an inch lower than the seam on both sides and get my uh, figure and then I'll also measure it this way. Now this has come out to uh, 21 inches by 27 inches. So now what I have found when you do this technique is you have to pretty much double your fabric for what size you want to end up with. Uh, it might be a hair over, but at least you'll have a little bit to play with. So then that means that if this was 21 by 27 inches, I need to cut fabric, which would be 42 by 54. Okay, now my fabric here is 42 inches, and I need, or I'm sorry, my fabric is 44 inches, and I need 42. So I'm just going to let this go and just do the whole width. And then I'll just cut the length down to 54. Now I did also want to tell you that we are going to be using the ruffler foot. Uh, this is an extra attachment for a sewing machine. Many of you probably have this. And let me tell you, this is probably one of the scariest looking attachments you've ever seen. I know it was for me when I first saw it. But it is so easy to use and it is, does such a beautiful stitch. You will love it. So uh, get your ruffler out um, and I'll show you the easy steps how to use it and you're, you'll be amazed at how quickly we're going to be able to put this pillow together. Now I've cut the material to the length that I need and what I'm doing is I'm drawing lines every three inches and this is going to be my sewing lines. I'm just using chalk here. Uh, you can use a marking pen, a wash away marking pen, or one that uh, evaporates. This is awful dark color because it's a dark gray. That's why I'm using the chalk. And then what I'll have to do is flip it over and I'm going to have to match that and draw a continuum on the other side. Now what I'm doing is I'm going to attach my ruffler foot um, we're not going to use this quite the way it's supposed to be used because I figured out a way to ruffle a whole length of material where I, I was trying to find a way to do this quickly and precisely and this is what I've come up with. So as you can see this, if you've never used a ruffler foot, this little attachment on the top moves around. And it has numbers uh, 1, 6, 12, and 0. I have it set on 12. And you attach it to your, to your machine uh, according to your directions. And uh, one thing I will tell you is to make sure that you tighten your needle and your presser foot screw with your screwdriver very tightly because it does shake it loose. I, when I first started this, it, I had my needle fall out because I didn't have it quite tight enough. So you'll want to make sure that everything is good and tight. Okay, I'll go ahead and get this hooked on and show you how to use it. Now I have my fabric. I have it marked the full width of the material. And what I'm doing to start off is I'm folding it right on that first chalk line. And what I'm going to do is normally when you put this in your ruffler foot, you would put this in and it would be right, you would move your material right over to that guide, which you can see is sticking out there. Well, we're not going to do that. What we're going to do is we're going to put this in on the line, right on the line, and we're going to use this little bar that's hanging down here, I'm going to use that as my guideline. So I'm not sewing as big a bite as 
as is recommended for the ruffler. So it's just going to be a little tiny ridge that's going to be going down here. I'm going to stick this in, put my presser foot down, and I'll show you what I mean here. So you can again see that I'm just using this bar here as my guide. We're getting the next section of material, making sure that I'm right on my chalk line. And I'm going to do this the full width of this first row of material. Now I have the first row all pleated all the way down and now I'm starting on the second row. I'm just doing it exactly the same way. Just put my presser, put my material in, put down my presser foot. I have it marked on my line and now I'm going to do the second row. And I'm going to be doing that all the way down. Okay, I have three rows done, and you can start to see this little ruffling effect that we're getting here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do the whole panel, and then I'll show you the next step. Okay, here's my panel. It's all finished. Uh, this probably took me, oh, I'd say an hour to 45 minutes, but look at this. Doesn't this look like something that would just take days to create? I am just so tickled with this. And also on the other side, it's just as cute. It's kind of puffy looking. You could use either side you wanted. Okay, now my next step is I'm going to go ahead. Uh, I'm going to use this side and I'm going to make this into a pillow. Now to make the back for the pillow, I went ahead and I cut two panels, the exact size of my pillow, which was 19 by 24 and a half. Then I went ahead and I surged just one of the shorter ends on both pieces. And I folded these back. Now I folded mine back 8 inches, but you can kind of judge that uh, on your pillow size. And I need this to be 24 and a half. So what I'm doing is I'm just going to cross those over, those panels. And I'm going to go ahead and pin those. just so that stays at this size that I need. Now I'll lay out my front for my pillow. And what I'm going to do, I want it to go this way, is I'm going to place this on top. So you want the right sides to the inside. And I'm going to pin this, and I'm going to pin this, and I'm going to match it to this very first ruffle line so I so this is sewed straight I'm just going to take that and pin there just start you can see it's larger than what I needed but we can just go ahead and trim that off but I say it's better to have a little extra than not have enough so okay I'm going to go ahead and pin that all the way around and we'll sew that and we'll show you what this pillow is going to look like now I'm sewing the side here and I just wanted to show you that you need to make sure when you sew that you sew these all going in the same direction so everything lays nice. And I'm going to sew to the corner here and I'm going to show you how I turn my corners. Make sure that's laying nice. Okay, now I'm stopping right about the, the toe edge of my presser foot, and I'm going to turn this on the diagonal. And then I sew about three little stitches. One, two, three. 
okay and then I'll make the rest of my corner and I'm lining that up luckily I came out where it both sides lay right on the edge of that ruffle so I have a good guide there so I'm just going to follow along there with my presser foot and I'll finish this up and we'll see how the pillow looks this has now been sewed all the way around all four edges I went ahead and I trimmed off all of the extra and I did a serger stitch all the way around it now I'm going to take it and turn it right side out make sure you get your corners good almost got it okay and I'm ready to put the pillow in Now one thing, uh, this is a little tighter to get your pillow in, but the reason I do it this way, I will show you. Okay, let me get this straightened out a little bit. Okay, now when this closes, as you can see, that makes a really nice closure. A lot of times you'll see pillows, they'll be like this, you know, the inside show but I like it where it really overlaps nice you don't need anything here to make a nice closure it just looks really good and I believe we're all finished I hope you like it thanks for watching bye bye